Today I want to talk to us about focus. That's why I want, I want to get on to with it quickly before time goes. Focus. Look at your neighbor say focus. focus. That's the most important thing. Focus. You know we just finished a series on discipline. Yes. And Christianity has become, I'm sorry to say, almost like a lazy religion. People are believing in water, in handkerchief, in oil, in rapid fire. Fire must fight fire. This must, and we get all these catchy headlines without going deep into the word of God to see what are the things that we need to do to get the promises of God concerning us. God has already created you in his image and after his likeness. God has already made you great. I tell people that are not married today, I'm telling you your husband or your wife has already been born and that husband or wife is somewhere. You know, after I married my wife, I discovered that Mrs. Sandy and my sister were in school together. She didn't know. So if she was, they were evil to each other now, they say, ah, you are the brother of that wicked girl. You understand? They didn't know that when they were in school, secondary school together, they, we would become in-laws eventually. Amen? And this is how God works. You must have an understanding of who you are in Christ. He gave you dominion. He made you head, not tail. He gave you authority. And so what is focus? The title just says focus. What is focus? I looked in the dictionary. It says the center, when something is the center of interest or activity. This generation has made, a, let's look for some synonyms. It says center, focal point, central point, center of attention, the hub, the pivot, the, hub, the nucleus, the cornerstone. That thing that you are getting to, that's the most important thing. And if you are not focused, you can't achieve much. Focus enthrones greatness. Amen? Amen? For you to be focused, you have to be disciplined. One of the things I found is that there's, there's a challenge today with a lot of these young, uh, younger people when they go to college. When I was younger, it was simple. You are going to be either an art student or a science student. From form three, you know whether you are going arts or science. Then they focus, then you narrow your life to sciences. Physics, chemistry, biology, maths, English. Then all of you others do Bible knowledge, English, history, and all those, that kind of stuff. So the people going in arts know they are going towards law or the social sciences. The people doing science know they are going towards medicine, pharmacy, or the sciences. Focused, simple. Today, you ask somebody, what are you doing? Somebody has been in university for two, three years. They tell you, I don't know, I, I'm changing my major. How, how can you be changing your major after four years in school? You are supposed to graduate in four years not to be changing your major. Lack of focus. Anything that you see like today, everybody is doing so many things. Somebody starts nursing today. Tomorrow they are doing something else on the side. Next week they are doing, they, they, we are not able to focus. And we're going to go a little deeper into it. What is focus? Focus helps you to enthrone discipline. It helps you to be successful. You decide with the grace of God what you want to do, how you want to do it, and where you have to do it. If you want to be a carpenter, go to carpentry school and focus on it. There's a company in Nigeria, I think the name is Wood, Wood Styles or Woodworks or something like that. When I went to their factory in Lagos, there's nothing they don't do with wood. They focus, to, they don't do welding, they don't do roof, they just do wood. And of course, when you go there, there's quality. Amen? What is focus? If you are looking here on earth, there's a reason why people that are professionals specialize. So if somebody specializes in criminal law, you don't go to that person to talk to them about civil law. They will refer you out. That's one of the problems we have. You know, there's a maxim that they say, say, jack of all trades, master of... There's a burden of being a genius at times. When you are too talented at times, you don't succeed. Because you have too many options. You are good in math, you are good in science, you are good in reading, you are good in basketball, you are good in soccer. So you don't even know which one. But there's some other guy who is average. But he has decided to focus on soccer. And when he focuses on soccer, no wonder he would even be better than the person that's talented in soccer 
but is has focus on too many things. I pray that God will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Firstly, as Christians, our focus must be heaven. In the Redeemed Christian Church of God, you know we have our goals. The first goal is to make heaven. That's it. Now, if you understand what your focus is, which is to make heaven, the Bible says you should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all the other things you are looking for will be added on to you. Amen? If your eye is heaven bound, Things that God says you should do, when you begin to obey them, you will discover that every other thing in life will fall into place. I will give you some examples. Galatians 6, 7. Galatians 6, 7. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For me, this is the fundamental law of life. If you're wicked to young people, when you grow old, you will be lonely and sad. And you'll be calling all your nephews and he say, ah, you didn't ask of me, you didn't ask of me. They will just say, yes, man, yes, man, they hang up. Because if you were good to them when they were young, you don't have to call them to ask them whether they're asking of you, they will ask of you. All these little children that you are wicked to today, one day they are the ones that will grow up. And they are the ones that will be able to drive. They are the ones that will be able to go on Uber and all these apps that as we get older, you may not even know. At the wedding at the church we went to the other day, I saw a fan. I was showing my wife. I said, ah, this fan has no blades. And I was just trying to figure it out, but I just pretended as if I've seen it before. <laughs> because I was, <laughs> as I was sitting there, I was looking at the, ah, they just, I saw the guy trying to turn. I said, where is the blade? I said, we will see what he will do. I'm using one eye, looking at him, looking at him. Ah. And he turned it on, and it started blowing. I said, glory be to God. <laughs> they are doing fan with no blade. They have driverless cars. In many of your houses now, you can't even turn on your TV without your children. You better be good to young people because you may not be able to enter your house if you lock yourself out. <laughs> you have to call, ah, Kunle, hi, how are you? This is Uncle John. Um, how do I get in the house? The app, they say, oh, just press star 22424. They say, okay, thank you. And the door will open. You have to decide where you are going. The Bible says God is not mocked. We are mocking ourselves. Whatever you sow is what you are going to reap. When you are young or when you are in America or in Nigeria or in the Caribbean, don't look. The principles of success are the same anywhere in the world. We talked about it when we are talking about discipline, diligence, hard work, perseverance, endurance. Be good to your neighbor. Do the right thing. Joseph sold integrity. The money that other people, his brother sold him for money. You know, I've told you the shortcut is the fastest way to destruction. And it's the longest way to success. But the one that goes, my mom used to say, slow and steady wins the race. One step in front of the other. One step in front of the other. You will surely get to the end. Amen? Amen. So number one, love God. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven says, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. That's focus. For you to succeed, for you to be enthroned in greatness, for you to have the things that you desire but you don't have, you must be focused on God. Everything you are doing for your marriage to work, the message we heard at the wedding, it was so brilliant. You must be focused on this marriage will work. You must be focused that these children will know God. You must be focused on doing the right thing, even when the wrong thing is expedient. Although it's expedient, it does not make it right. Amen? So you must love the Lord your God, not with some of your heart. This is why when we talk about money in church, people get stressed out. But if you love your wife and God gave you money, is it because your wife is demanding money? No. You can just go buy her a car and give it to her. Why? You love her. If you love your father or your mother, you send money to them, you do this. Not because you love them. And this is the struggle we have. Anytime 
you are asked to show an expression of your love, it becomes a problem because you don't love with all your heart. I was using Henry as an example just now. He was at a, a wedding where he was the MC overnight. And he got on the first flight this morning and came here and got to church before some of you that live in Hempstead, five minutes away. When you turn to the left, you will sleep. Uh, you look at the time. Uh, pastor has not started preaching. It starts about 12. You turn again to the right. Is it because of pastor? You love God with all your heart. That's why some people volunteer to vacuum this church. If we had to pay people to clean the church, I know how much the people that we, we wanted to pay, how much they charged us. But some people volunteered and they are doing it. The reason you can hear me, some people volunteer to ensure that you can hear me because they run the cables and do all these things. The choir volunteers to come here on Saturday and they, they, they practice, they do their best and they sing. If we paid a choir to sing for us, you won't complain about the choir because it will be real money. But these young men, they just come and want young women, they are doing their best. And God will continue to empower you yeah. in Jesus' name. I remember, was it Father's Day last week? So the women were the ones doing usher. They, almost all of them said, we will not do it again. <laughs> because now they had a better understanding of what it takes to stand while all of you are sitting. Amen? Focus. Put your heart on God. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans 12, 2 says, We should not be conformed to this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. As a child of God, you must renew your mind. This is why we went to the convention. Some people ask me, why do you go to convention? Are you saying God is not here? God is everywhere. But when you go and sit down for five days, six days with 8,000 people, you wake up in the morning in your hotel, you just go and listen to a word of God. You are renewing your mind. You are refreshing yourself. You cannot drive your car and say, because I bought gas last week, I can continue to drive the car. At least it's my car. No. Your car is good. You need to refresh your car. You put in gas. And after 3,000 miles, for people that are still using 3,000 mile cars, you go and service it. If you don't get that, don't worry about it. At a certain level, your car is 12,000 miles before you get oil change. But at Hyundai level, it's 3,000 miles. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? God will take you where you want to go. Amen? Amen? What I'm just trying to say is that you must renew your mind. That's why we come to Sunday school. If, if you come into church when they're doing Sunday school, the church has 10% of the people that come when they're listening to the word. And it's in Sunday school that you can ask questions. And then a lot of us are wondering, why is God not answering my prayer? Why? No, you have to understand what you want to do. You can't become a doctor by watching, um, what is the doctor program they have on TV? Eh? Grey's Anatomy. You can't watch Grey's Anatomy and say, now I'm a doctor. Not only will you kill yourself, you will end, in jail, end up in jail. That will not be your portion. To be a doctor, you must be focused. When people say, oh, let's go to the party, you say, no, I can't go, I have exams. Let's go here. I say, no, I can't go. I have to do this. To be an athlete, to be a world, a top class athlete, you have to be focused. You wake up every morning, you say, you see, my, my, my leg muscles are, are weak. I have to work on it. You focus your training. I remember I saw LeBron James one time. He was big and bulky and then they were interviewing him and asking him about you know, how did he become so lean? And, and he went for a special training because he saw what the weaknesses were in his game and he focused on it. No wonder Michael Jordan, that the, one of the greatest basketballers ever, he went to play baseball. He didn't, he didn't do so well. He's good at baseball, but he had focused on basketball. Brethren, what is your focus? Focus on God. When we say focus on God, it helps your entire life. Because God put you here for a season. I read somewhere, the, man, the guy said, we are actually not men. We are spirits living in a body. And yet, we concentrate more on the body that is temporary instead of the spirit that is eternal. I pray that God will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, number one, I said, love God. Number two, seek wisdom and understanding. If you've been coming for Digging Deep um, on Tuesdays, we just spent about five months 
studying the book of Proverbs. Five months, every week, reading line for line. Now we are in, um, is it Ecclesiastes we are in now? Yes, we started Ecclesiastes. Another book of wisdom. I am not going to go through it with you because you didn't come for digging deep. Amen? Amen. James 1, 5 to 8. James 1, 5 to 8 says, I think that was our Bible reading. It went to 15 in the Bible. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth it to all men liberally and unbraided not. And it shall be given him, but let him ask in faith, not wavering. Focus. Your marriage is in trouble. Focus on your marriage. You can't see a problem. If you see a ditch and you know that you have to cross over to the other side, you have to find a way to bridge that gap to get there. By sitting on the other side and running around in circles, you will still not cross that bridge. Amen? Your children are giving you some sort of issue. Focus on those children. Be talking to them every day. They'll pretend they don't hear. Oh, leave me. It's my life. Believe me. When they used to talk to us too, we didn't like it. And today, look at us. Glory be to God. Amen? But if you don't talk to them, there's no default setting. If you don't talk to them about God, even when they say, I don't want... I, I remember I shared this testimony before where um, Pastor Adifaran, Pastor Paul Adifaran, I listened a long, long time ago. And he was on drugs and he was every in, 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 in Skid Row in California, real crackhead. But his mother, I, I listened to his testimony a long time ago. Then independently, I went to his brother's church one day, long time ago, 20 years or so ago or 15 years. And his mother was giving testimony that her children were on drugs. And but she used to say, God, this is not what you said to me. This is not an agreement. And she used to pray to God. Believe people used to laugh at her. Oh, your husband, your, your such distinguished family, your, your children are on drugs. But she didn't give up. She was focused. At this once, two of them are pastors. At least the two I know are pastors. Glory be to God. And what happened one day, he said he was so strong up on drugs and he was walking past a church and he heard a hymn that his mother used to sing all the time. They were just playing the hymn. And he was just struck on, and he, did, he said he didn't know what happened. And he just walked, stumbled into the church. And as the man was doing altar call, while he was, he said, ah, you are the one we've been waiting for. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. And that's how his life changed. Because the mother deposited, she focused on these children. The Bible says, I and the children the Lord have given to me were for signs and wonders. I and the children the Lord has given. You call those things that be not as though they are. You don't say, oh, these children are useless. What am I going to do? I regret not training them, or I regret not taking them to church. I tried my best. I, I educated them, and they don't, they don't listen. Too bad for them. Ah, it's too bad for you. Because the word of God did not say your children are for signs and wonders. The word of God did not say you are for signs and wonders. The word of God says I and the children that the Lord has given to me. If you know God is the one that gave you the children, then you are for signs and wonders. And then you begin to call it into existence. You begin to speak to it, and you begin to act it. And you begin to work with your children and God will bless you in Jesus name. Amen. It says if any lacks wisdom, you should ask. If you lack wisdom, go into the word of God. Go into the Bible. There's nothing you are looking for that is not there. I pray that God will give us understanding in Jesus name. Amen. Jeremiah 29 13 says Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29 13 says you will seek me and find me if you seek me with all your heart. So that means you will seek me and you will not find me if you are not focused on me. Some people in ministry, they are looking for pro, 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 um, position. That's why we are so, so uh, enthralled with titles. Chief doctor, reverend doctor, captain doctor, most senior apostle, most reverend, most... What, what does that matter? The Jesus we are serving, he has only one name, Jesus. But we are not satisfied. Some of us call him Dr. Jesus. <laughs> you know, he's, we, we don't, the man did not call himself Dr. He says Jesus. Just call on the name of Jesus. We reverence our leaders more than we reverence Jesus. If you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart. I pray that we will seek God with all our heart in the mighty name of Jesus. That is why when you are in your closet, why don't you kneel down to him and cry unto him?
tell him the things you cannot tell anybody. And say, God, direct me. Help me. You are the one that helps the helpless. You are the help of those that have no hope. Instead of you relying on your calculation. There was a man called Jacob in the Bible. Very smart. Very cunning. Very intelligent. His breakthrough did not come until he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. He now said, forget Jacob. I'm, I'm I've tried all my cunningness. And the more cunning he was, the more cunning his enemy too was to him. You know God is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, you will reap. He, he traded, he took his brother's birthright by giving him um, pottage, right? Somebody said that pottage must have been something else. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but that's not even the worst thing. Then he now duped his father, listen to this, by pretending to be his brother. Amen. He wore the skin, maybe of the goat that he used to make the pepper soup. And the father was saying, this voice is Jacob. But the, the skin is Esau. No problem. He now went away. And he now married somebody. Then somebody changed the skin of the person that he thought he was marrying. Then he will now cry, where is God? If it was now, he will look for a pastor to go and be binding his father-in-law. Say, father, the, the enemy of my star that doesn't want me to marry Rachel. God, die, die. There's nothing die. What he sowed, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he will reap. Seven years he did. After that seven years, then he did another seven years for the real one. And then when he did his seven years for the one, that one didn't have children. Because God is not mocked. So what we think we are doing in secret, right? nobody may see you, but God sees us. I pray that we focus on God. Seek him with all your heart. Don't seek him half and half. This is why Christendom, by the grace of God, we will have a revival. But if you go to Europe today, I was reading something. I sent it to some of the ministers. Over 3,000 mosques in England. New Zealand now. <laughs> Don't worry about them. Germany. Christians are abandoning church. People are, are, are oppressing you, telling you, don't pay tight. Don't give to the church. The pastor is a thief. The pastor, so the pastor too has double mind. The pastor will say, you know something? Let me be doing business on the side. So that the church will not say it's their money. So if he spends half his time doing business, half his time doing church, then another quarter of his time family. After some time, he sees that ah, Pastor X died. His children are on the street. Pastor Y died. He has no house. Ah, Pastor, I say, no. Let me spend 80% to do business. Lest the people of the God now say he's chopping the money. Who is losing? Satan is so brilliant. Call him anything, but don't call him a fool. Churches in England are now being converted to mosques. And they are converting them to a pub. I saw one, they converted to a pub with all the stained glass. You are saying, ah, do you pay your tithe? <laughs> ah, is, is it not money that we use? They are converting it. I told you one of our brothers, um, Pastor Adejaye, they were going to buy a church. When they got there, the church had already signed a contract for a mosque. So, Pastor Jay called me and said, you have to go and meet them. So, he went to them and said, Pastor, how can you say? They said, the, the mosque wants to pay, I don't think, remember the figure, let's say 1.5 million, I'm just using that. How much are you willing to pay? He said, ah, we don't have more than 1 million or so. Said, ah, you see what we're saying? And the mosque, we pay cash. You, are you, do you have cash? We don't have cash. You want to get less, you want to pay me less, and you still don't even have the money. In the mosque, five people will just come together. Oh, we have to buy it. They just gather the money, buy it. And they continue with their business. Because they are focused on their God. They are focused on taking over the world for their religion. We are focused on abusing each other, fighting each other. You are Protestant. I'm Anglican. I'm this. I'm that. We don't care. We are focused on the few bad eggs that we see. Instead of being focused on the many that are doing great and mighty works. Amen? Yeah. When you talk about mega pastors that are Riding Rolls Royce. Or how many mega pastors do you even know? In the whole of America, are they up to 100? And how many churches are in America? 
in Nigeria where they always abuse them. They're showing them on television every day. How many are they? There are some pastors in Nigeria that have bicycle and they will carry a pregnant woman on the bicycle and take the pregnant woman to maternity clinic. Nobody focuses on those. There are pastors where Boko Haram is today that they are slaughtering them, killing them and they are saying, no, I will not reject Jesus. Nobody talks about them. If you are so offended by the bad ones, why are you not so excited by the good ones and send your money to those ones? What are you focusing on? Focus on God. God will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number three, endurance and patience. You see, I'm moving very quickly. We will go deeper some other day. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Although Jesus was God, he did not think it robbery, being equal to God, coming down to earth for man to abuse him, to slap him, to do all sorts of things. Do you know the reason most people leave church? Somebody offended them. Somebody, including me. The pastor didn't call me on my birthday. I, I, you won't even believe I hear that. Pastor didn't call me. Or pastor's wife. Ah, they, oh, pastor, forget about that. Pastor's wife, this, pastor's wife, that. Pastor, we just keep going. When you offend me, and I'm still your friend, when I offend you, why are you my enemy? What's the big deal? If, you, if your focus is to make heaven and somebody offends you, tell them. Say, listen, I don't like what you did. Some people say, I'm too blunt. It's why, what's wrong with that? If I love you, and I tell you, if you don't, you, you know, and we move on. What are you focused on? You must be focused on Jesus, looking on to Jesus. The Bible says the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was before him, that joy was not immediate joy. You have to go through pain to get to the joy. And because he endured like Joseph endured punishment to sit at the right hand of God. Joseph endured. Many of us want to be prime minister. Operation, get your dollar. You will go. You will go. If I start selling candle today, say miracle candle, you will buy. <laughs> you will buy. It's true. I mean, redeem may chase me because redeem don't do candle, but you will still buy. <laughs> you will still buy. If I open my garage today and start selling holy phone, people will buy. I say, this phone is holy phone. Any phone call that comes is miracle, miracle phone call. People will, I don't, I'm not lying. Are, are these things not happening? You don't want to endure the hardship. You want your marriage to work, yet you have girlfriend. When your wife catches you, say it's the devil. How did the devil take you there? You have to endure. You have to try. You think marriage is easy? You think going to school is easy? Some people are going to school and doing night job and doing two jobs, three jobs. It's not easy. They are focused. They've set their target. They say, I'm going to become a carpenter. And they focus. I'm going to become whatever they want to become. Let me show you something that I, I brought from Dallas quickly. I'm challenging you in this church. If you don't, anyway, some of you have been doing, but more, can you imagine, look at this. I don't know the person that did it, all, so don't think I'm doing advertisement. Tasty bites. You are in America looking for work every day. Some of you make chin chin that will make your children and your neighbors thieves. They'll be stealing it from your house because it's too sweet. This person did something about it. They did something. It's not a big deal. Why are you making chin chin that only your friends know you make good chin chin? And why are you making chin chin just to make your family fat? Let it make your bank account fat. Start doing it. Bring it to church. Will we buy? Do it. Sit down. Fat. Look. So this is the jumbo size. Please don't ask me for it later after service. It's, it's not for the church. It's just for samples. <laughs> Look at this. Is the small one. I think this one was two dollars fifty. Two dollars fifty at the camp, and this was. No, it's not. It was five dollars or ten dollars. Okay, whatever it was. Twenty. Yes, twenty dollars. I mean, the person is making their chin chin and they are focused on their business. You can't eat it. You don't know what is in it. I want to sample it for them to be sure that it's good. I will not give you what I've not partaked of. Well, you know, 
it is not going to be a good thing. So next week, next week, see me. Instead of asking me for chin chin, go and make your own. Go and make your own. Some people are crying. They're saying they sacked me from the job. God, the reason they've been sacking you at every job is because you are at the wrong job, doing the wrong thing, with the wrong focus, always looking for money. Many people are always looking for money instead of quality. See a man diligent in his business. The Bible says that person will stand before kings and not mere men. To rise to the height of your profession and career, you must be focused. If you are a neurosurgeon, you must be focused. You can't go and be doing pediatrics on the side. Doing this, ah, they have, um, what do they call it? Locum. Is it locum they call it? Oh, there's a little locum in, in New Jersey. You will drive from New York to New Jersey just to collect $100. Now, the guy that's saying, man, I'm broke, although I'm a doctor, I'm working hard, grinding, grinding. After 10 years, they, are, they have all these certifications. They are a fellow. And, and they, the job they are at, maybe they are at NYU. And NYU doesn't pay as well as this other company or this other, or the other place. Some of us, we will just quit where we are being trained to go and get the job where you get quick money. And that quick money, the career is terminated. No focus. If your focus, if your eye is single and you know that this is where I'm going, you know where not to go. If you want to drive Uber, drive Uber and let Uber know that you are driving. But you go and drive Uber, you, your, your car is dirty, you, then you say the enemies from your village are chasing you. You are the one chasing yourself. Your car is nasty, everything nasty. You are rude to the people playing music, talking on the phone. I entered the cab the other day, the guy talked on the phone from where we were going and he was speaking foreign language. Even me, as a foreigner, I was concerned. I was, oh. Because he was saying, <laughs> I feel like getting down before we get to our spot. No, but you see, some people they are driving Uber. Look at how they dress in their suit. When you get to the Uber station, that person will get down, they will open the trunk. Some people they are driving Uber, they come to your house, enter to help you take your suitcase and put it. They just, um, yeah, and they just sit in the car. And they are, what are you saying on the phone? Why don't you just be professional? Get down. I'm an Uber driver. Yes, sir. How are you? Good morning. They take the thing, put it. They start giving the person five star, five star, five star. Before you know it, he starts sending other people to do Uber. He starts doing other things. You may not end up in Uber. You may do customer service. You learn how to do business. You, you must be focused. We are always complaining. We are always whining. If I tell somebody, why don't you start doing chin chin? They say that their cooker is not good. Uh, it's too small. Then be doing small one. Do the small one and let now when they start selling, what they will do is they will push up the price too high and reduce the quality so that they can make more money. Instead of letting other people adulterate their own products, keep your own very well and quality will bring kings to your table. Everybody that has ever come to me for business, most of the people that come and say, Pastor, you know, I know you like business, let's talk and this. They always come and talk to me about money. And I'm telling you in advance, I already tune off. When the reason why you came to talk to me is whether somebody can give you money. What is money? What does money have to do with idea? If you have a good idea, people that have money will be chasing you. Because they want to make money. That's what they call venture capitalists. If you show me something that we, and then you want to come and ask for a loan, you will not get the money from anybody that is making money because they don't give loans. That's why they are rich. Except they're going to have high interest. They want to listen. You come and tell the person, how can I make money for you? You are the one with the idea, but many of us are so, we don't even know. We say, oh, um, it's my idea. It's my brain. My uh, Continue with your idea. Uber was an idea that became a billion dollar business. An idea. Are you focused? Or are you double minded? James 1, 12 to 15 says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been 
approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. James 1, you can continue. Just read James 1, 1 to 15. I can't go too deep. Verse 13 says, Let no one say he was tempted. I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires. That's the distraction. The reason things don't work out is you are drawn away by your own desires, not the desires of God for you. You are drawn away. When you are produ producing something, then you water it down to make more money. No. If you were just doing what you are supposed to do and doing it right and marketing it right and teaming up with people that can help you to get what you want them to do, you will see that there will be progress. There will be promotion. Many of us say our prayers are not answered. But the Bible is telling us that it's the prayers of the righteous that God answers. And so if you are coming to God unfaithful, how do you expect God who is faithful to bless you when his word says he will not bless you if you are unrighteous? And so you now start complaining about God. Many of us don't go to the root and say let's, let's stop like the prodigal son. The prodigal son went, he lived righteous living, he did bad things, he was no saint. But at a point he came to his senses. The Bible says he came to himself. And then he said, I'm going back. If you can't go forward, go back. Go back to the starting point. Draw a line. Think out a plan. Think it through and focus. Feeling sorry for yourself won't solve your problem. It will just attract other people that will help you compound your problem. And they start giving you wrong advice. Why don't you drink? Why don't you smoke? Why don't you take a little crack? It will take off the edge. It will relax you. Since you've been going to that church, what have they done for you? They start getting you distracted, drawing you away from the fellowship. That would not be your portion in Jesus' name. If you read the book of Nehemiah, I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but Nehemiah 6 verse 3, I just took a snippet. Nehemiah 6 verse 3, he says, And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? whilst I leave it and come down to you. You know the story of Sambalat and Tobias. Jer Nehemiah said, look, he had a mission. The walls of Jericho had collapsed. The, the temple had been destroyed. He said, look, king, let me go. That was his, when you have a mission, and when he went on his mission, I'm paraphrasing, and he started building, Sambalat and Tobias kept trying to disturb him. He said, I'm not coming down. You, some of us spend too much time arguing trying to justify yourself. Listen to me, you will never satisfy the world. My uncle said, if you give somebody, they came to you say, oh, Remy, please, Remy, please, oh, my eye, my eye, you say, oh, this poor guy, let me take out my left eye and give it to you. I take out my left eye, and say, oh, you see how wicked Remy is? Remy is so wicked. They say, why? He knows his right eye is better than his left and he took out his left eye and he gave it to me. How will you satisfy people? Do your best, leave the rest. As long as you are serving God and you are doing what is right, that's it. If you come to somebody for help, it's better the person tell you, I cannot help you. It's not in my, you are, I want you to loan me 10,000. I say, ah, sorry, I don't have, but this is $100. You can take it. That means you can only go and borrow 9,900. You, you are on your way. At least it's $100 reduced. Instead of stressing yourself. Then they go about and say, oh, and I know pastor has money. Pastor, how do you know? How do you know? I will do what I can. I, live, I, don't, I don't feel bad about it. Don't go around trying to satisfy everybody. Do what is right. Whatever it lies in your hands to do, do it. I'm not saying be selfish. I'm not saying be wicked. I'm just saying do your best. Yes. Nehemiah said, I'm not coming down. I'm not coming to argue with you why I should build the wall. Because you're going to be wasting my time. I have a sword on the right hand. I have a trouble on the left hand. If you come, I'll cut your head. Let me just continue doing my work. And he was building his wall. Go and read the book of Nehemiah. Focused on his assignment. Eliezer, when they sent him to go and look for a wife for Jake, um, Isaac, he went to, to, to look for the wife. He prayed. God answered his prayer. When they got to say, oh, take off your shoe. Let us wash your feet. Let us eat. Let say, oh, no, 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 no. Let's conclude the business that I came here for, for my, the son of my master, Abraham. Uh, Abraham. 
He concluded his business before he ate. Some of us, when we eat, we will forget the business. I said, ah, the food is sweet, oh. Like this chin chin now. Some of you will not be able to focus on the message again. <laughs> you will miss the point in the chin chin. It's the chin chin. After service, you can eat it. Don't worry. Let's focus. Ah, you are even clapping. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. The word of God is yea and amen. Matthew 6, you can read from 19 to 24. But it says something here, let's say in verse 22 to 24. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body will be full of light. If your eye is single, focused, this is how light enters into your body. And your eye is your senses. What you hear, what you think, what you smell, what you see. If you spend all your time just reading garbage, it's only garbage that you have. If you spend all your time listening to junk music, there's nothing that is redeeming. There's no redeeming quality in it. What are you spending your time to do? How are you focused? It says, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, thine eye be single, thy whole body shall have light. But if thy eye be evil, the whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light is in the darkness, if, if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, now great is that darkness. If you don't focus your eyes on the right thing, if you are doing evil, then your whole body will be full. If you watch bad movies, like horror movies at night, you start to dream. That's not a vision. That's just that your mind is full of all the things you watch. If you are thinking of how you are going to kill somebody tomorrow, if that person appears to you in your dream, chasing you, if you are the one that was thinking evil thoughts to chasing them in the first place. Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is of a good report, the Bible says dwell on these things. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As I close, Paul in Galatians 1, 15 to 16, he said, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace, to reveal his son in me, that I may preach him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. Do you know what that is saying? There are some times when you call meeting, like Joseph. Say, ah, the sun, the stars, and the, the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars were buying down. Yeah, we will see where that dream is going to get to. If somebody is not a destiny helper, why are you going to meet them to bounce off ideas? The Bible says, iron sharpened iron. Wood cannot sharpen iron. Wood will dull the axe. If somebody has no house, they've never bought a house in America. They, are not, they don't even have a job. You now want to buy a house. They are the first person you call and say, ah, my brother, how far? I want to buy a house. The guy says, eh, in this America, don't buy a house. Oh. It is debt. If you buy a house, it will ruin you. The roof will leak. The ceiling will fall. The plumber, because that's what he knows. And he wants to keep you at his level. But if you know somebody that has a nice house, the guy with you sit down and say, listen, sir, I know you bought your house and I want to buy a house. How can I buy a house? Oh, yeah, this is my lawyer. You see, destiny helper. This is my lawyer's number. This is the home inspector's number. These are people that will help you move forward. You want to buy a car. You go to somebody that he knows all the shoemakers that are in, in Long Island. He cannot help you. He will just say, don't buy a car. Boss is better. When you buy a car, let me tell you the problems with a car. Number one, you have to put gas. You say, wow. Then you have to service it. Wow. He said, the one that my cousin bought, not him, his cousin, the transmission conked out. He said, ah, transmission. And the one that uh, Mama Shola bought, the windscreen, a bird flew through it. How many, all the people that are driving, how many birds have flown through their own windshield? That person is going to ruin your life. Because you are going with the wrong advice. You are going to the wrong people. Iron, sharpened iron. Who is in your squad? Birds of a feather, they say, flock together. 
if all your friends are prostitutes, ah, there's something about you that that friendship is saying. If everybody you know is an adulterer, they all have boyfriend, they all have, and they are married, but you are the only one that is pure. <laughs> if all your friends are drunkards, but they are my best friends, we grew up, is either you will convert them to your God, or they will convert you to their spirit. One must happen. You cannot be comfortable with sin. It's impossible. You must be focused. If you know where you are going, you know where not to go. You cannot call me today and say, Pastor, they are doing um, something at uh, the Gentleman's Club. How many people know what Gentleman's Club is in America? <laughs> the strip club. And that we just go there for evangelism or whatever you say you want to. You don't go there doing happy hour. I told you once, I went for networking. So it was in Manhattan. I think I shared it with you. When I got to the networking man, all the women there were naked. Body paint. They painted their body with paint. And they were serving drinks. So my friend that took me said, oh, this is where you meet movers and shakers. And I was not a pastor. I said, I started speaking in tongues in my mind. I said, Rebo, so shaky, Rebo. I look up again. I say, oh, do you want some, ma'am? I said, ah. After 60 seconds, and it was cold. That day was cold. It was winter. I went for networking to help my business. I went outside. I stood outside. I was shaking. Then I went back inside. I was looking for my friend. Look for him everywhere. He was so, he was so excited. All of them were so happy. They were enjoying the networking. Yeah. Be networking. Be networking your life to hell. I asked him for the key. I said, please, just give me. He said, what? I said, no. I went in the car, started the car. I was inside the car. He did, and I was trapped. I was there for like five hours in the car. They were doing networking. When they finished, they dropped me back at home. I never networked again. I will network with God. Amen. People start telling you these things that, oh, this is the only way. Jesus is the only way. If you serve God, your marriage will work. If you serve God, all things will work together for your good. People may speed past you, but you will meet them and overtake them. Don't be envious of seemingly successful people. Seemingly. Because you don't know what they did to get where they are. And you may not be able to do what they are doing to sustain where they are. All the people that sold their soul during Saddam Hussein's time, when they caught Saddam Hussein, they caught all of them together. The whole story ended. They started hanging them one by one. Don't be upset with God that God did not do what he said he would do. No. You are the one that is unfaithful. Is there any man that has no sin? It's a lie. But we must work out our salvation with fear and trembling. If you are focused on Jesus, if you are focused on God, God will see you through and he will take you to the height that you are supposed to go in Jesus' name. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What was Jesus' focus? I came to give life and life more abundantly. Let's rise to our feet. What is your focus? While on earth, you must focus on your education. You must focus on your career. You must focus on your business. But for you to be successful in any of those things, you must have first have a focus on God. If you want to make heaven, your marriage will work. If you want to make heaven, your relationships with people will work because you forgive people that have offended you. Doctors have proved now that anger and unforgiveness causes more harm to you than to the person you are upset with because that person doesn't know. They are enjoying their life. Just, they are even getting looking better and better. Somebody owes you money. He didn't pay you. You have to make a calculation. Will you ever be able to get this money? Sometimes you may have to just write it off and not to borrow the person again. Because that person will be enjoying your money and every time you see them, you want to kill them. And if you are not careful, you catch a case. Did you see the man in the Nigerian embassy in London? They didn't give him passport. They didn't this. And they aggravated. 
if Jesus had just came, come into his life, he would just say, ah, embassy, I want to curse you, but I leave you for Jesus. And he would go home, and maybe that day was digging deep. He would have gone to digging deep. We would talk it out. It would be okay. He broke all the windscreen of all the cars. He's now in Holloway prison. And the embassy will now use that opportunity to get new contract to buy new cars. And they will fix the insurance, we pay for it. He broke all the, he was so angry. He was so angry. He was so angry. He was so focused on that passport. And he broke down. He won't have passport because only God knows whether Nigeria will ever give him passport again. He broke all their windshield. And now he's also in jail. And he'll have to get a lawyer. And he'll have to think it through. Anger will not solve your problem. Money will not solve your problem. There's an old song that says, only Jesus can say. If you decide to focus on him, solution has come. Father, we thank you this afternoon for your word. We ask that our eye be single. The Bible says that you, you can't put your hand on the plow and look back. If you look back, Jesus said that person is not fit for heaven. We want to be candidates for heaven. Whatever distraction in your life, in your marriage, in your business, in your spiritual life, I'm praying for you today that the almighty God will make your eyes single. That you will focus on God and that at the end of it all that none of us will miss heaven. Anything that will cause us to stumble and fall. Father, help us to avoid it. Strengthen us. Build up that endurance in us. Let us be able to go all the way. At the end, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Still in the attitude of praying, I want us to pray for the man of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your son that you have used to speak to us today about focusing on Christ. Father, we just want to thank you for the word that came out through him today. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for everyone who has listened to this message today. Father, we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We cover your son, Pastor Remy Oshikonlu, in the blood of Jesus. We pray that you will help him to focus in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not allow any distraction to come his way in the name of Jesus. We soak you in the blood of Jesus. We soak your wife and family members with the blood of Jesus. The ministry that God has committed to your care, we soak in the blood of Jesus. We pray that the work of God will prosper in your care in the mighty name of Jesus. As you are speaking to us about Christ, at the end you will make it to heaven. Even with your family members in the mighty name of Jesus. We soak you in the blood of Jesus. We pray that God will surround you with an edge of fire in the name of Jesus. That the fire of God will surround you, your wife and your children and everyone connected to you in the name of Jesus. As you are working for God, we pray that no evil eye will behold you in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that any evil hand that may be stretched forth towards you we wither in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will uplift you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will promote you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will take you to places from greatness to greatness in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be the head. You will never be detailed in the name of Jesus. You will never borrow to spend in the name of Jesus. You will not beg for food to eat in the name of Jesus. As you have said yes to God to work for God, the Lord will reward you. The Lord will send men to serve you. It shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. For the rest of us who have heard this message today, I pray that the Holy Spirit will give us understanding of this message in the name of Jesus. The Bible says when we hear the word of God, we should be the doers of the word. I pray today for everyone that has heard this word today in the name of Jesus, who will not just brush this word away in the name of Jesus, who will be the hearers and the doers of the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus, both the speaker and the hearers, will not be found guilty at the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. We may be seated. Praise the living Jesus. It is offering time. Offering time. Let us prepare our offerings. If you are writing a check, please write your check to RCCG. 
COG. If you are writing a check, write your check to RCCG, COG. Package your offering and your tithe. Second Corinthians nine six to seven. Second Corinthians nine six to seven. The Bible says, "But this I say, he who sow sparingly, we also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully, we also reap bountifully." Verse seven says, "So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly." Or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Praise the Lord. If today is the day you are giving your tithe, can you please come forward? Let us pray together. If you are giving your tithe today, please come forward. Let us pray for the titers. Father, in the name of Jesus. Eternal King of glory, we just want to thank you for these ones. Thank you for providing for their needs. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving them sources of income. Father, we pray as this one are obeying you in the area of tithing. We pray in the name of Jesus because you are not a man that will lie. You have spoken in your word that you will rebuke the devourers concerning these ones. Father, please honor your word in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I join my faith with you because you are using your substance to support the work of God. That God will send men to support you in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you lay your hands on will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. God will bless the works of your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. You will never know sorrow in the name of Jesus. You will never borrow again. You will live to, borrow, to, to lend to nations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Sickness will not come upon you and your family in the name of Jesus. You will not, lay, you will not spend for waste in the mighty name of Jesus. The, 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 anything that, that stands as a, a devourer, God will rebuke those things in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. We use this time to remember those who have no source of income. Father God, we pray, make a way for them in the mighty name of Jesus and provide for them in the name of Jesus. For those who do not know how to tithe, Holy Spirit of God, speak to their hearts in the name of Jesus and help them to do your will. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let us rise up and give our offerings and tithes joyfully. Let us rise up and give to God joyfully. Praise the Lord. Choir. Hallelujah. Amen. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord is good. There is nothing he cannot do. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see. Come and see the Lord is good. There is nothing. There is nothing he cannot do. Come and see the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord. Oh, come and see the Lord is good. Everybody, come and see the Lord. Father, King of Kings, we just want to thank you. Thank you for the privilege of being alive today. Thank you for keeping us to see this day. Thank you for providing for us to be able to give to you. Thank you for giving us the grace to give this little back to you from the 
much that you have provided for us. Accept our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, we pray today, the Bible recorded in the book of Genesis, that two people gave offerings. One was accepted, one was rejected. We are asking you today, because you are a merciful God, accept all our offerings today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Accept all the givers today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If there's anyone who has given to you today that do not even know Christ and just started to give to you, Father, touch the soul of those people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Draw them closer to you and save their souls in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. My Lord and my Father, I pray as your church will be deliberating on using this for your work. Give them wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone who has given today will not lack in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible recorded that Isaac saw in the time of famine and he reaped a hundredfold. Everyone who has given today will reap in a hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We will not borrow, we will not beg, we will not be stranded financially in the name of Jesus. Amen. It shall be well with us. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, we worship you. Amen. As we continue today, be with us and let every, everything be done to glorify you. Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, choir. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. You're all welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Chapel of Greatness, where lives are empowered. We pray that your life will be empowered for greatness in Jesus' mighty name. And this is our year of joy and gladness. So always remember, whatever that situation is, whatever that challenge is, whatever that storm is in your, in your life, remember, this is your year of joy and gladness. And it shall be so in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In this church, we have two services. We start our service with the morning due service at 8.30 to 9.15. Please, and please join us. It's a wonderful and impactful service. And we start our worship service with the Sunday school at 10 a.m. Please join us. Always a wonderful time of blessing. A time whereby we get to study the word of God together. And I pray the almighty God will continue to bless us as we do so in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In this church, we have two families that we pray for every week. This week, the families we'll be lifting up in our prayers will be the Bright family and the Daniel family. Praise the Lord. So please remember them at your prayer altar each and every day to lift them up. And I pray that as you do so, God will answer your prayers as well in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's remember our building fund. Uh, some of us, uh, we got tickets that we're supposed to sell. Let's continue to sell these um, tickets. And the almighty God, as we build for God, God will build everything concerning your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you haven't been baptized, please, you can see me after the service. Baptism is very, very important. Our Lord Jesus Christ was also baptized. The weather is nice. Nobody's wondering about it being cold anymore. We still have a few months to go. So please join us. And God Almighty will do great and mighty things for us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All our midweek programs are all listed in the bulletin. So please check them. And we have our YouTube um, channel whereby we watch our services live. For, if, for any reason you can't be in church, please watch us live on the Chapel of Greatness TV on YouTube, and like us on our Facebook, view us on Instagram. And not only just watch it, you could also share it as well. And I pray the Almighty God will bless us as we do so in Jesus' mighty name. We should all be evangelists for God. And as we continue to propagate the word of God, God will continue to show his glory in our life. Praise the Lord. There's also the, the boat cruise, which is also on. Uh, let's remember the boat cruise, I believe, is um, $100 for each person. So uh, more details are going to be coming from the church. We'll send flyers out for more details with regards to the boat cruise. So let's just continue to tell people and let's just build this for God. Let's have our own building. Let's not be tenants anymore. Let's become our own. Let's own our own building for God. And I pray God will continue to help each and every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 4th of July is coming up soon. 4th of July is coming up. So praise the Lord. So in this church, annually we have our 4th of July whereby we come as a family and we come to the church and we celebrate. There are always um, fun games. The children get to enjoy themselves. We come together and we just have fun. 
So let's remember 4th of July, we'll be hosting our annual barbecue. And I pray the almighty God will guide and protect each and every one of us in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We just concluded the 23rd annual convention. Praise the Lord. It was glorious. It was a wonderful time in Dallas. Though it was hot. But the prayers were also hot as well. And I pray that next year, many of us will be able to attend these glorious programs. And I pray the Almighty God will continue to let His church continue to be the rock of this country and of our world in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, um, the families of the week, the Bright and the Daniel family, could you please come forward? The Bright and Daniel family. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's stretch our hands towards the Bright family. Father, we thank you for your children. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. We thank you for uniting the family together. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your faithfulness. Lord God Almighty, I pray that they will begin to swim in glory. I pray that they will begin to increase. I pray that you will meet them at the point of their need. I pray that you surround them with your hedge of fire. I pray that every time I hear of them, it will be good news. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that the innermost desires of their hearts you will grant to them. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And let's pray for Sister May. Father, we cover your daughter with the blood of Jesus. We use her as a point of contact for her family. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that anytime she hears of them, it will be good news. And when they hear of her, it will be good news. Father, I ask that you meet her at the point of her needs. That you increase her on every side. That you surround her with your hedge of fire. That you protect her from harm. Father, I pray for her that the grace of God will abound for her. Lord God Almighty, as she's working even in the house of God, things will work out for her good. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. God bless you, sir. God bless you, my favorite name. God bless you. God bless you. Let's clap for them if you are going to clap. Clap. If you don't want to clap, don't clap. <laughs> Amen. Please don't be jealous if I say that's my favorite name. It's, for, it's, it's my own to have a favorite name or not to have. Amen? <laughs> you don't believe things people, people stress me about in church. If I say something, someone say, Pastor, what about me? I say, okay, you too, you are my... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Very quickly as we, we're going to close now. The 23rd convention just concluded in, in Dallas. Amen? It was wonderful. We had a wonderful, wonderful time. But I just want to talk about it one minute. It's going to happen again if Jesus tarries June next year. It's not good for us to be members of the redeemed Christian Church of God and our church. You see, this is, this is the challenge we have. And this is the discipline that other religions have. Do you know idol worshippers? If they say they are doing their annual Ogun festival and you are a member of the Ogun group, you will go. Because if they tell you if you don't come, you will start hearing with your nose. You, you, you'll be afraid. You'll, start, you'll go. You know, they, because, and this is, this is the problem. We don't take our, and that doesn't mean, I'm not saying that if you don't go to camp, God is not here, or God is not in your home, but you chose to be members of the redeemed Christian church of God. You know, if you are a Catholic, if they go to Rome, go to Rome. Amen? If you are part of a group, let's go together, we pray together, and I'm telling you the, the beauty of it. The Bible says when two or more are gathered in my name, he's there. We, we, we have about 8,000 people gathered together in Dallas. You can plan it. You can decide next year, June, I'm going to go. Apart from that, there's God, God. I mean, what God, I don't even know how to explain this to you. My brain is working faster than my mouth. So let me calm down. Okay. I'm going to link two things. I went to a wedding in Indianapolis, Emmanuel and Osato's wedding. When we got to the church, you know, when we got to Indianapolis, New York people were like, oh my God, this place is so rural, or so down. We New Yorkers, this is not, you know. But when I got to the church, it wasn't rural at all. 
they had a beautiful, beautiful 650-seater auditorium that is expandable to like 2,000 or something like that. They took us around. They had nurseries. They had this. And then they took us to the back. They had a full football field, soccer field. They had a soccer field. They had like 10 acres of land. They had, and this, and you know what happened? I was the one that joined them together. I never met the pastor. I, I spoke to them once. Somebody, I just called and said, okay, yeah, you're coming. We know you are the one coming. You're coming to join. And I arrived straight from Dallas, went to the hotel, changed, went to the church, and I fitted in as if it was our church. Redeemed. Because God gave us that platform. There are so many people in this church that the redeemed Christian church of God is doing what the Nigerian embassy cannot do for you. You know. People call me. As you can ask my wife. Because my number is online. They will just call me. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. I say, what happened? Oh, I came, I came from Nigeria. This happened. What, would I, what are we going to do? Are we say we go to hell? No. Whatever we can do to help, we help. Some we house. Some we have to put in hotel. Some we have to pay their days. People that have immigration problems. This church, this is our own little church, not the 650-seater church. We pay for immigration lawyer for some people. Do the, we, we have to use our discretion. We do our best. Sometimes people exploit us. They take advantage of us. But it's because we as a body, we are stronger together because I can now call the person in Indianapolis that my sister or my cousin has a challenge in Indianapolis. Pastor, please. They will say, okay, tell them to call me. But if we don't come together, we are not helping. It. The Redeemed Christian Church of God North America has over 1,000 acres of land in Dallas. Floyd, Texas, in that subdivision, that is where the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan, was founded in America. That's where Redeem has their headquarters. Can you believe that? <laughs> the KKK and we are so valuable to them that anything we are doing they are so happy because we are the ones that are now bringing income into the place the church bought the school they decommissioned one of their schools when Redeem bought that school a whole school they now Geo said donated back to the community we donated it to the community for them to be using as community center so some people say oh, why are we sending money to Dallas why? there are so many things going on there is so much work to do but if you don't go there, so the point I was making that I linked the two together is when I went to that church, I was refired. Because if you think this is church, when I went to that church, you say if you go to somebody else's farm, you will know that your own farm is not so. In New York, our farm is okay. <laughs> but when I go, and can you imagine Indianapolis? I was looking down on them. Oh, God forgive me. But my eye opened when I got there. I said, ah, it is well. Amen. So all I'm saying is let's work together. Next year, June, let all of us go to Dallas. Amen. You can start planning from now. If you put away $50 a month, you will have enough money for a ticket. It's not that serious. And we fellowship together, we dance together, we praise God together, we pray together, we worship God together. And God will help us all in Jesus' name. Alright, what else do I have to do? Any other thing? Okay, okay. Before first timers, um, there's something. We still have about five booklets for the raffle ticket. So if you've not got a raffle package that you are supposed to sell for towards the building fund, please see um, Dick and Ajayi after after service. If you have your raffle ticket and you don't know where it is, it's worth five hundred dollars. You owe us five hundred dollars, whether you sell it or you don't sell it. Please stand at the door. Anybody that's <laughs> When it is due, just write your five hundred dollar. I don't. It doesn't matter whether my wife keeps asking me, Pastor, have you sold? Have you sold? I say, What's your business? <laughs> whether I sold or I didn't sell. As long as the tickets they gave me, you get your money. What's your business? Because I may not be able to sell. You know, you know, I may not be. I may be able to sell. I may not. So I'll just write somebody's name on everything. Maybe I'll write, you know, and I'll give you the five hundred dollars, and I'll sell two. At least I'll sell two booklets. That's one thousand dollars. Abby. I've sold my own. Or maybe my in-laws will just buy from me straight away. <laughs> and then that one is finished. For them, it will be 1,000 each. And then for CJ, it will be times three. Then for Chartered Accounter, it will be times five. Because there's money. There's money. It's how to spend this money that we're looking for. <laughs> oh, God. Let's rise. Because what does somebody told me something I wanted to say. First time, as, sorry, man. Who, apart from mommy and... My in-laws are not first-timers. We know them. You don't need their name and information. Who is, visit, who is visiting us for the first time? 
Oh, my brother. Oh, good. Is that your friend? Okay, please rise. Please rise. God bless you. Oh, wow. Tino, you two are a first timer. And Tino, you can rise. Mommy, no, mommy, stand. Stay standing. Who else? No, stand up, my brother. You can sit down. You know, when you rise like this in our church, you, you are not going home again. That means you become a worker. You start to work. And then you have to be in. Listen to me. Don't remind them. You have to be in solitary confinement. I want to stress him out. You have to be in solitary confinement here for like seven days. Are you willing to join us? You can't go home. No, it's not serious. You just stay here for seven days. Praying, fasting. <laughs> it's so confused. The guy. <laughs> The guy's like, dude, man, you didn't tell me this. What's going on, man? <laughs> My man, what's up? <laughs> oh, are you? <laughs> Do you live here in America? Ah, he's even more stressed now. That they be like, KB, is this guy serious? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Look, we have fun in our church. I oh, know. Please, sorry, you remain standing. I still pray for you. Remain standing, mommy. Remain standing. I only mess with boys. I don't mess with women because if you mess with any woman, then they may get upset with you. And then my wife will get upset with me. Mommy, are you, do you live here? You, you live in Nigeria? Baltimore, move here. Why Baltimore? Isn't this New York? Baltimore. You too, you are not going home. We see me after. Say, let us pray. Father, we thank you for our sister and your brother that are here. You did not bring them here by accident. Father, I pray that their eye will be focused. Focused on you and the things you want for them. This year in our church is the year of joy and gladness. I pray that because they've come into this church, joy and gladness will be their portion. The hand of God will not depart from them. Lord God Almighty, empower them for greatness. Open the heavens over them. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please, if you don't mind, my brother and my sister, could you come? You could just come to the front and go with my sister. We'll just take your information. He's getting scared. He's like, are they going to lock me up? No, no, we're not. We're going to keep you just for two days. <laughs> you see, that's why my preaching, I say, Pastor, you play too much. You should, you should focus. Amen. He's really concerned about his life. Is this guy serious? Are they going to lock me up in the African church? for? Another? Amen. Let's rise as we close out the service. Uh, where is the choir? Do you have your microphone? Sing it. We are sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Have a blessed and glorious week.